Hello, I want to welcome you all to this presentation, Building and Sustaining Your Community by Training New Leaders. Turnkey Toolkit Avoids Reinventing the Wheels with John Clement and Dan Voss. Uh, this is a continuation of our Community Affairs Committee Leadership Program for 2020, expanding on what would have been our, just our leadership day and moving it across the entire summer. So we thank you all for making time for this. Just a few housekeeping notes. We are recording this presentation. We'll make that available to everyone after the meeting is over. And if you have any questions along the way, Dan and John are going to be happy to answer those at the end. So if you could, please put them in the Q&A tool, which you should see in Zoom on the bottom bar, and that'll collect all of the questions. And then Aaron will be reading those out to our presenters at the end. So we have them you know, easily understood by everyone on the call and ready for the recording. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to John and Dan. Hi, I'm Dan Voss, STC Fellow and longtime Education Committee Manager for the STC Florida Chapter. About to retire from active duty in STC after 33 years. Good heavens, has it been that long? And hi, I'm John Clement, a former mentee in the STC Florida Student Chapter, uh, STC Florida Student Mentoring Program with the University of Central Florida and president of the Future Technical Communicators Club at UCF. John's being too modest. He is also a recipient of STC Sigma Talk High recognition this year, and he is one of our community's up and coming new leaders. More on that a little later. This presentation starts with a brief recap of a leadership day program at Summit 2018, when the hosting STC Florida chapter shared 10 community building initiatives we've developed along with an online toolkit that describes these programs and provides administrative tools for other communities to adapt and implement them. In the past two years, we've added six programs to this online resource, which is open to all STC communities. And in this webinar, we're going to give you a look at six of the 16 programs in the online toolkit. We ask that you hold your questions on these programs until the end of the presentation just to make sure that we stay in the allotted time frame. And as we describe these programs, we'll focus on the critical imperative for STC communities to develop new leaders to carry on the work in years like Dan's. Hey, I like that. I've been called a lot of things, but Pioneer is a new one. Well, you've earned it, Dan. When you started the student mentoring program with UCF in 2003, I was just three years old. You do realize, John, that is a somewhat depressing factoid for me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Here are six successful programs we have found particularly effective in building and sustaining our community over the past 25 years. Other STC communities have successfully adapted and implemented these programs. As we discuss these programs, we'll demonstrate how to drill down on all the programs in the online community building toolkit. The resources in the toolkit are open to all on our website. The programs are sorted into five categories and the resources include everything you need to adapt the program to support your community's objectives. As a new member of STC Florida's core leadership team, I found these online resources extremely helpful in developing my own leadership skills, both at UCF and as a student member of the STC Florida chapter. Here are the programs we've found to be effective for chapter administration, event planning, and leadership and mentoring. Our student mentoring program with UCF has provided us with a continuous pipeline of new talent to refresh our core leadership team. If S STC is to survive, we must engage the next generation of emerging technical communicators. We must make it relevant for them. The thing that makes STC relevant to me is a close partnership between the STC Florida chapter and the Future Tec Technical Communicators Club at UCF. There's no separation between established professionals and students entering the profession. We're all one team. The last two categories in the toolkit involve promotion, recognition, and competitions. We go back. Oh, my bad. 
Okay. Um, uh, the programs in these categories, one we found to be particularly effective is our active membership program. In this program, we offer monogram shirts for attending meetings and taking an active role in the chapter. I can certainly attest to that. Last July, at the chapter's annual leadership retreat, which includes student members, our mentors encouraged us to take an active role in the chapter, and I'm proud to have earned my first active membership this year. I don't think it will be your last, John. Indeed, we are counting on that. Here's how the online community building toolkit works. When you click on any of the 16 programs, you will get a brief description of the program. You can also drill down into a list of resources you can adapt to establish and sustain such a program in your community. The mentoring program is definitely what brought me into the SDC Florida chapter as a student member. Once I joined the program, I became increasingly more involved in SDC and took advantage of what I had to offer. Without mentorship, I probably wouldn't have had the push to join STC, FTC in the first place, let alone be here today representing the tremendous professional development opportunities that it offers. If you're interested in starting a student mentoring program, you don't have to reinvent any wheels. Here's a turnkey ready toolkit with everything you need to establish and sustain such a program. The resources are all linked to PDF files, but if you need the native files, all you have to do is ask the STC Florida chapter. The key to success is three motivated individuals, an STC professional from a geographic chapter, a student from a technical communication program at a nearby college, and a faculty sponsor. The photo shows me as professional coordinator with two student coordinators. As president of FTC, I was STC Florida's liaison with CCF this semester, so I'll be the student coordinator for next year's program. Wearing the third hat is Professor J.D. Applin, who has served as faculty sponsor of FTC since its inception in 2003, and who is a strong advocate of the student mentoring program with the STC Florida chapter. The photo shows Dan presenting Dr. Applin with the STC Florida chapter's Gloria Jaffe Award as the outstanding technical communicator in Central Florida in 2017. This is a proven formula that has led to 154 mentor-mentee partnerships in our 17-year program. We'll give you some time to read it. We'll also provide you this presentation as an additional resource. The most important thing the professional and student coordinators of the mentoring program do is to make the right pairings of mentors and mentees. We take this responsibility very seriously because it is key to a successful program. The student mentoring program is indeed a win-win proposition. As students, we learn practical things from professionals that we couldn't get in the classroom. And as mentors, we have the immense personal satisfaction of giving young professionals a jump start on their careers. We also benefit from that continuous pipeline of new talent for our community. The Leadership Development Program, or LDP, was a natural follow-on to our student mentoring program as former mentees went on to assume leadership roles in our community.
We established the LDP in 2018 by identifying the veteran coaches and the first four rising stars. The photos you see here are from our half day storyboarding workshop as the coaches help the rising stars prepare for their two presentations at the 2018 summit, which SDC Florida hosted in Orlando. So this is what I have to look forward to? Absolutely. The amazing success of previous rising stars like Alex Garcia and Bethany Guad makes it clear how far this opportunity can take you, both in STC and in your professional career. It's really all up to you. If you're all in, the sky's the limit. Well, I have to tell you, I'm all in. That's good news for STC Florida. Now let's look at one of the key resources for the LDP. This LDP resource, the Fast Start Leaders Guide, is a great tool for STC community leaders. Developed by STC fellow and former board member, Mike Murray, this engaging and practical guide offers a wealth of proven concepts for building and sustaining an STC community, or for that matter, any community or organization. The key to the LDP is matching the coach's strongest leadership skills with the rising stars leadership development areas. The rising stars and coaches each fill out a self evaluation profile on 18 key leadership skills. The first nine of which are shown here. They must assign a one, two or three to each skill one being an established strength, three being a leadership development area, and two being in between. What if someone rates him or herself all ones, all twos, or all threes? Ah, we thought of that. It's against the rules. Everyone has to identify six ones, six twos, and six threes, no exceptions. Here are the other nine leadership skills. The exercise really forces you to take a look at your own leadership abilities and also your areas of growth. Yes, it does. It was an interesting exercise for the coaches as well as the rising stars. One of the coaches who shall remain nameless, who is, but is on this call, protested saying, how can we identify six threes after a 30 year career? We'd better not have six threes at this point. I told the person, I know we coaches tend to consider ourselves absolutely excellent in most areas at this point in our careers, but remember, there are degrees of excellence. The third program in the toolkit we're going to focus on is the active membership program. Now in year 20, this program has proven to be an effective incentive for increased volunteerism in the chapter. People really do aspire to these coveted shirts. I can vouch for that. At our leadership retreat last July, a number of mentees expressed their determination to earn one of these shirts this year. Well, I'm happy to report that three of this year's mentees have done precisely that. And you are at the top of the list, John. Well, that's great. So when do I get my shirt? Well, uh, I'm afraid that depends on the coronavirus. Normally, we give out the shirts at our June awards meeting, but it's hard to pass out shirts virtually. You might have to wait a while this year, next year, or the, later in the decade. <laughs> well, that's all right. It's a recognition that counts. So how does the active membership program work? Who decides who gets the shirts? Active member points are awarded for several activities as shown in this chart. So I made the cut? It wasn't even close, John. We see you as a key contributor to our STC community going forward. And you have certainly affirmed that in everything you've done this year. Well, all I can say to that is a huge thank you. No, John, you've got that backwards. You represent the future of our STC community and the society itself. Thank you. 
This chart shows how we track and tally the active member points throughout the chapter year, starting with the annual July leadership retreat and continuing through the following June. So this shows who will be receiving the shirts this year. Well, yes, I guess it does. But please realize this is top secret information and you are not to reveal it until the shirts are actually distributed. I get it. My lips are sealed. Good. <laughs> Another advantage of the active membership program is tracking attendance at monthly chapter meetings. I remember this chart from the leadership retreat last July. I was impressed by how we use this data as an indicator of which programs drew the most attendees. Did you happen to notice which meeting tops the chart in attendance? Of course I did. The annual STC FTC leadership meeting at UCF. You're right. But strategic program planning is just one benefit of the active membership program, as you can see on this chart. I think I already know what you're getting at. Just out of curiosity, Dan, how many active member shirts do you have in your closet? Well, let's just say it's full, okay? <laughs> A key element in our educational outreach initiative is endowed scholarships. It certainly is. The Pell Grant Scholarship is considered a major honor at UCF. And we also have an endowed scholarship at the University of South Florida. You mean we support the Bulls as well as the Knights? Well, maybe not in football, but in tech comm, yes, we do. Take a moment here to look at the resources on setting up a scholarship program that are available to you in the online toolkit. This is always a tough chart for me. Did you know Melissa? Yes, I did. She was on our chapter's education committee after she graduated UCF in 1994 until her untimely death in 1997. And you were the committee manager? Yes. So this is why we light the green candle at the scholarship presentation every year. Yes, green was Melissa's favorite color. We always observe a moment of silence in her memory when we present the scholarships. Our chapter inherited a second endowed scholarship when we merged with the Suncoast chapter in Tampa in 2018. That's the one at USF, right? Yes. We're still working with USF to reconstruct the history of this scholarship, which goes back to the 1990s. The last few years, we've invited the Suncoast scholarship winner to be recognized at our April chapter meeting, along with the Pellegrin recipients. So step by step, we're truly becoming STC Florida. Absolutely. You can see how sponsoring scholarship programs has been an integral part of our educational outreach initiative over the years. I sure can. It means you're investing in the future of technical communication. Exactly. As with any program, our scholarships have come with some lessons learned. Like, partnering with the university is the best approach for an STC geographic community. Absolutely, for several reasons. As you can see, there are many advantages involved in such a partnership. So, how do you to support these scholarships? We raise money in many ways, as you can see on this chart. Since the inception of the Pellegrin Scholarship in 1997, we have worked to reach the endowment level of 25,000. And in 2012, a generous corporate contribution put us over the top. What about these other fundraising efforts like Operation Rising Stars? Was that when the LDP started? No, we actually first used the term Rising Stars about 15 years earlier in a fundraiser to support our educational outreach initiatives, including the Pellegrin Scholarship and our high school tech writing competition. The online toolkit for Operation Rising Stars is a great model for a fundraiser with personal and corporate sponsors.
We have a third scholarship on its way to endowment. It honors STC fellow Mike Murray, who has spent a life of service helping others. Mike is one of the finest organizational leaders I've ever known. As our chapter president from 2003 to 2005, he led us to three consecutive chapter of distinction awards. Mike was also a leader at the society level. He was a passionate pace setter in the accessibility SIG, fighting for universal accessibility for all with disabilities. He served on the STC board of directors before Parkinson's disease forced him to resign. Since then, Mike has remained active at the chapter level, even as this terrible disease has robbed him of his trademark speaker's voice and steadily eroded his mobility. Last year, three of Mike's friends in our chapter co-founded a new scholarship fund at UCF, honoring Mike's legacy of leadership and helping others, especially those who need it the most. Appropriately, the fund is named Make a Difference, something Mike has done his entire life. That's an amazing photo, Dan. Yes, it pretty much says it all. What's the goal to get the scholarship endowed in perpetuity? The threshold for endowment is 25,000. The fund presently stands at 15,000. We are appealing to Mike's friends in STC, in the community, and from his long career at Lockheed Martin to get this fund over the top as quickly as we can. I believe many of you on this call may know Mike. We would greatly appreciate any contribution you can make in any amount to help us reach this goal. Here's the fifth program in the online toolkit that we're going to talk about. But tell me, Dan, what does Wash Alliance have to do with sharing knowledge about the summit? It's a long story, which is detailed here in the online toolkit description. The short version is that our chapter had a 20 year tradition at the chapter year opening August meeting, where chapter members who attended the STC International Conference the preceding spring shared information they learned at the conference with fellow chapter members. So you really did have a wash line. Yes, indeed. Panelists or progression table hosts advertised the topics they were prepared to address with colorful graphic signs dangling from a clothesline stretched across the room. Wash Lines was always a very colorful event. We themed the event to reflect the city where the STC conference was held that year. And as you can see on Wash Lines 12, we went all out. Isn't gambling illegal in Orlando? Next slide, please. Wash Lines began as an interactive panel presentation where audience members chose the topics they wanted to hear about from the signs on the clothesline. And panelists gave many presentations <clears throat> on those topics. Over the years, it evolved into a rotating progression where attendees chose the three venues whose topics interested them most. The venues were identified by balloons color keyed to the event program. This is the rotation matrix and the event program for our 20th and final wash lines meeting in 2013. It was like a mini conference. That sounds very much like the annual meeting FTC hosts at UCF. Which leads us very nicely to our sixth program from the online toolkit. Over to you, John. As FTC president, this is your show. Thanks, Dan. The annual STC FTC meeting at UCF, which is usually held in February, is the marquee event on the FTC calendar. Our student officers organize the event, including securing meeting space, promoting it on campus and in the techcom department, and setting up the colorful decorations. This always informative and nicely catered event is free, open to all. The STC chapter covers the cost of the on-campus catering, Free food always attracts students. Here, every meeting at UCF, the panel discussion is on careers. 
Several chapter members gave mini presentations on their specialty disciplines within technical communication, and then they fielded questions. This interaction gives students real world insight into the profession that we cannot get in the classroom. It really helps us focus our career path. In 2018, the UCF meeting was in a progression format. This one had an unusual twist on the traditional wash line theme of bringing back information from the annual international STC conference. The Florida chapter hosted the conference that year, and the first four rising stars in our new leadership development program made two presentations at the conference. A technical session about how STC leadership opportunities translate directly into their careers, and a panel presentation and progression at Leadership Day introducing the online community building toolkit we've been looking at in today's webinar. The Rising Stars, all UCF graduates, previewed the summit presentations at two of the six venues, while veteran chapter members covered the other four. The 20th edition of Wash Lines in 2013 was the last largely because fewer chapter members were able to go to the STC conference as many employers stopped funding conference expenses after the recession. But it's great to see the tradition lives on as professionals bring valuable career information to students at the annual UCF meeting. I wasn't part of the wash line series, but I'll say this, the colorful panel and progression form are perfect for our annual meeting at UCF. I'd like to close by congratulating my co-presenter for stepping up as our next rising star in the leadership development program. John, young people like you represent the future, not just of the STC Florida chapter, but of the society itself. I'm honored to be chosen, Dan. And it gets even better. As a rising star, John's coach in the LDP will be my former mentee, now STC board director and the latest LDP coach, Bethany Aguad. We are indeed passing the torch. That's it in a nutshell. Please don't hesitate to contact John or me after the webinar if you have any follow-up questions or comments about the online toolkit or our student mentoring and leadership training initiatives. All these resources are available to your community. Please don't hesitate to contact the STC Florida chapter if you'd like further information on these 16 community building programs or would like the native files for the resources in the online toolkit. At this point, we welcome any questions or comments. Hello, okay, so we have one question currently in the Q&A box. If anybody else has any other questions, please feel free to put them in the questions and answer box and I will um, ask them of our presenters. But the first one is from Laura. Is there any way to do a mentorship, mentoring program with a university if they don't have a student technical communication organization? We have nearby universities that offer technical communication degrees, but I don't think they have student organizations. We have tried doing programs at the university and offering students free attendance at all our meetings, but have yet to recruit any students for the admin council. I think you could do that, but it would obviously be easier if there was an existing organization. What I would suggest then is to, uh, you'd have to find somebody in the faculty of the English department or whatever the tech comm program resides to at least help you get a beachhead there. You need to make a presentation to some of the English classes, tech comm classes, excuse me, and invite students to directly to become student members of your chapter. Uh, skipping the step that they join an organization at the college, which isn't there. Does that help? Yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, is there any other questions that we have um, from any of you? Anything big or small? I do see a question in the chat from Celeste. Oh, okay, I see it there. 
do you have specific officers positions that are in charge of each initiative program or is it just doled out on a volunteer basis? You mean the 16 programs that are listed in the online toolkit? Yes. The answer, the answer to that would be they, they all have, now they're not all current, but the ones that are all have a champion, usually a committee chair, uh, some of them happen to be on the uh, administrative council, but you have to have somebody in charge of something, a, a point of contact, or it isn't going to happen. Okay, I have another one. Uh, would anyone from Florida be willing to mentor other chapter leaders on some of these initiatives? Bethany, this is so tempting. <laughs> Am I supposed to step in here and remind Dan that he's trying to uh, he's step back a little bit from his STC involvement uh, to focus on family, but at the same time, I know you can't resist an opportunity to share some knowledge. Um, you have my email address, so what am I going to do? <laughs> well, and I can also say, you know, um, I'm currently the chair of the Community Affairs Committee. We have other members, and I know Alex is here in the chat, too. So there, there are certainly people here we're happy to share with you, you know, what we've learned and answer questions and, and provide that, you know, that mentoring along the way. So absolutely, uh, you know, feel free to, to shoot me an email. I'll put my email address in the chat, and uh, we'll make sure to connect you. There we go. You've got Alex instead. Alex has volunteered to tribute. You can email Alex. His email's in the chat. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. <laughs> if you are short on volunteers to be in charge, which of these programs do you think would be the highest priority? In my mind, no question, it would be the student mentoring program. I honestly believe that program has been a major factor in our chapter's continuing health and growth and all the successes we've achieved over the years. I mean, we've gotten at least four or five chapter presidents were former mentees. And we've got somebody on the board of directors right now who was my mentee, and, and now she's an LDP coach. So. Sorry. Um, Yes, that's who would be would be the most important. I guess another one that would be really helpful is something like the active membership program. Maybe it's not shirts, maybe it's baseball. I should have I shut it off, I'm sorry. It's okay, it's building suspense about your answer. So people are really <laughs> waiting to hear what, what, is, it? what is it gonna be? So you ask which ones, if you, if you obviously you're not going to start 16 programs. So, and also depends on your community's demographics and your, and the objectives that you have. But I have to believe that the influx of talent you would get from the student mentoring program would be extremely helpful on any other program that you wanted to implement. The active membership program we found really encourages volunteerism, which is something you need in any organization for it to, for it to thrive. Yeah, I can vouch for this, uh, the benefits of the mentor mentorship program because my experience in it so far, um, like I said during the presentation, it got me very much invested into STC instead of just the student club at UCF. And through that, even just meetings with my mentor helped me get professional skills, got me um, help with internships, new contacts. Um, so from a student perspective, it was really helpful. And I think the main benefit I've gotten out of STC so far, or at least the largest benefit. In terms of the work to, to implement one of these programs, the active membership one would be pretty much, it's out there, you know, how you would do it. The mentoring program, you have all the tools, you know, applications for mentors, mentees, everything from soup to nuts, but you would have to establish that connection at a university preferably with an organ student organization, but at least with a faculty person in tech comm and, and attract students that way. Okay, and I have another question. Uh, do most UCF graduates stay in Florida? I moved to a different, the point was I, that the, Laura moved to a different state after she got her master's degree. 
So I guess students who are in the programs, then they, do they stay where they are in Florida? Well, we require them to stay in Florida for 10 years. Or <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, we've lost a few very promising young people who had the audacity to move to another state. <laughs> Some of them stayed in SDC in the other state. We've got somebody who's apparently running the New York Metro chapter who's a defector from SDC Florida. <laughs> but I guess our retention rate, what would you think, Bethany, about 60, 70% stay in Central Florida? That's a wild guess on my part. Uh, I would say a large percentage, especially since we have a pretty good, uh, I guess, track record of placing students in local jobs right after graduation, which is a strong motivator to stay. Um, but of course, Florida is a rather large state. So right now, you know, John's in Miami, I'm on the East Coast. So we've got a lot of different room for people to move to different parts of the state. So even if we're distant, we're still pretty connected. But I can tell you, John's not leaving Florida. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that, I didn't know that part of the contract. He also has family in Florida. <laughs> he, he likes oh, yeah. me. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions? Just give it another minute or so. That's a very good comment from J.D. Applin that should be shared. Let's see. Yes, in the chat, from a faculty sponsor's perspective, I think you should keep it simple. Start a student organization so you can get your university to provide for some space for meetings and then begin with the mentoring program. All stems from this. This gets students interested. Well, without JD's help, more than help, championship really at UCF, uh, we wouldn't have had the mentoring program be as successful as it was. He literally tells the people in this class, you graduate with a 3.8, that's not necessarily going to get you a job because there's going to be 10 others with a 3-9 competing for that position. But if you join FTC and STC and the mentoring program and take on responsibilities within the chapter and write newsletter articles and have an office on your resume, you're going to wipe out the competition at the interview. Can't get a better endorsement than that. Yeah, that's what he told me when I first joined. And here I am. <laughs> He's very convincing. <laughs> now, the fact that he threatened to flunk students from his course, they, no, just kidding. <laughs> any other questions? And I'm checking in the chat to see if we missed any, but I don't see any so far, and I don't see the else in the tool. So I guess that last call for questions for Dan and John. I did uh, copy Dan and John's emails into the chat. Oh, did we miss a question from Laura? Laura's question. Oh, Laura's was a comment, I guess, sort of an implied question, which was, so we need to get a professor to join STC. There are professors who do, who are members of STC, some that we know, some that we may not know, who may choose not to, um, put their uh, information in there, but we do have an academic SIG, which is geared for those who work in academia or students. So there are definitely connections that can be made um, through the academic SIG. Um, but there, and there are people who, and those may even appear for those who are community leaders, you may be able to find some of those in our, um, in your membership reports, um, which is what you have access to in the community reports if anybody has issues um, accessing reports or questions about that, you can feel free to email me, membership at sdc.org. We'll put it in the chat. Obviously, if you are fortunate enough to have an SDC student chapter at a nearby university, that would have a faculty sponsor who does have to be a member of SDC. As it turns out, Dr. Applin actually isn't, although he's presented at STC conferences in the past, but that hasn't made any difference at all. I and mean, he's been a, a tremendous champion for us. Okay, and we have another question. How do you do fundraising? We are volunteer starved and now funds starved. Repeat that, please. How do you do fundraising? Um, there are issues with funds and volunteers to do both initiatives. 
So I guess how to start fundraising if you are kind of starting from scratch. There are, if you, can we go back to the, an early slide, John, the one that shows um, the various elements in the toolkit? Sure thing. Right near the beginning. Okay. This one? Further. Further. Too far. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just a couple more hits. We had listed all the fundraising. Yeah. I'll keep going through. Okay. Um, this, that's it. Um, promotions. In that there are two programs, one that's called fundraising and one which is a very specific fundraiser called Operation Rising Stars, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, Operation Rising Stars sought personal sponsors and corporate sponsors to help support our educational outreach initiative. And we mentioned that it was tied to the scholarships and to our, at that time we had a high school tech writing competition so that the people would know they were not just supporting STC, they were supporting their local schools colleges and, and high schools at, at that time. Uh, I don't remember exactly what's in the other one fundraising. Do you, Bethany? I think that's just a, a laundry list of different things we do, such as uh, we have an Amazon pass-through that gets us 2%, and that's good for a couple hundred dollars a year, and that's easy enough to do. Uh, in, in the past, we've made deals with uh, Alex was a champion at this, making deals with local restaurants back when you're allowed to be with other people as opposed to in isolation. And uh, he would get like a kickback of 15% on the bill. So at that time, we had some chapter meetings at restaurants. We actually had our ADCO meetings at restaurants. And they went much better when you could drink. But in any case, uh, that was a, another fundraiser. We also sold... Um, chapter paraphernalia, that's an unfortunate word, uh, swag, <laughs> like coffee mugs and baseball caps and things like that uh, for a kickback from the vendor that supplied those items. And mostly though, it comes down to flat out asking people to support you, especially corporations. That's, that's where your big money comes from. We got a $9,000 contribution from P then PBS and J. The name has changed since then, but that was what put our Pelegrin scholarship over the top. Don't be afraid to ask. You may be surprised how much you can get. Okay. The next question is, how do you handle objections to the cost of STC membership since organizations are no longer sponsored? I mean, objections from potential new members that don't want to pay the STC registration fee? Is that the intent? Yes. Okay, well, we can't do very much for uh, regular members. We do subsidize the, the membership fee for students and new technical communicators to make it easier to, to join. Uh, as far as the fee for the total membership, we, we essentially tell the story that it's highly competitive with fees from other professional associations and it pays for itself several times over when you consider the fact that you have a job listing alone would be highly valuable. Salary structure, salary analysis lets you negotiate well. And of course, the conferences, the SDC publications, TechCom, Intercom, and the increasing virtual presence of STC, the uh, forums we have to bring your problems to and discuss them. Uh, it, it's really a no-brainer if you're already there, but if you have somebody who doesn't really know what STC is, you have to be specific as to what you get with membership. Bethany, would you like to add anything to that? I know sometimes it's a hard sell for student members and there's concerns about, you know, it being prohibitive, especially with, uh, you know, just the costs of, of tuition and that sort of thing. Uh, we have done uh, like free meetings for students where they get vouchers that cover meeting costs and are also done a like student membership rebate where they sign up and 
uh, you know, participating with the chapter that we give them a certain amount of their cost that's covered by the chapter. Uh, just to note, if you do any sort of membership reimbursement, you have to offer it to the entire uh, group. So if it's uh, for students, it has to be for all students and that sort of thing. So we have done some incentives before. But overall, I think for us, it's just been emphasizing all the different things you're getting with your STC membership, even beyond the community level. So definitely establishing what the community brings to the table, but highlighting all the many things that the society has to offer that are for our members. And at the local chapter level, probably the number one drawing card we have is job search and placement. I mean, it, the mentor and mentee, each pair, to, sets their objectives for the year. In, in most cases, though, the person is a graduating senior, and one of the objectives almost always is help me get a job. And that, in, that inv uh, involves resume polishing, setting up a portfolio, both physical and, and online, and in mock interviews, and in some cases, even contacts in the area that got a job directly, but we've had an extremely high rate of placement for our graduating mentees. And just as an aside, if anybody has um, just needs some help or review of just over the overview of some of the benefits that even Dan brought up about just general STC membership at the, at the home office level, I'm always available to help with that. I'm the Director of Membership Committee Relations for those who may not know me, um, but I am your resource. So, um, and here for you. So you can always reach me um, by email um, and by phone with any questions that you have. I'm accessible to you as a resource as well just to talk about membership and benefits. Erin's very, very nice. She actually let me into the, the headquarters of STC back when you were allowed to be with people. <laughs> and, uh, well, I snuck in today, but uh, great coffee. we were happy to have you. <laughs> and another question popped up. Let's see. What is the path to fellow and associate fellow and how do you, uh, oh, and how is it covered in the leadership development program in the educational toolkit? That's a really good question. And in fact, it isn't. Uh, we basically see our leadership development as students who have been mentees and then are becoming officers. But that is a very good question. The process, um, as I recall, once a year, uh, we solicit eligibility for associate fellowships, which I, on top of my head, I think it's what, 10, 10 years, a senior member to apply for associate fellow? Bethany? I think it's 15 years. Am I, am I wrong? I'd have to double check. Sorry. We weren't prepared for this question. It's a good question, though. I'll make sure to include this information when we send out the recording. <laughs> well, in any event, the, what we do to help people achieve that rank is to assist them with the application because it is quite extensive and people are inclined not to brag enough about what they do. So we kind of got to give them a little, little help on that. We do have five fellows in our chapter, which helps. So we, each of whom obviously became an associate fellow first and then a fellow. So we've been through this 10 times for ourselves. And thus, when we have new people becoming eligible with the 10 or 15 year threshold, uh, we can guide them and here's what you, here's what you do. Okay, I think this is a question for me. Uh, it was, will the CAC, the Community Affairs Committee, continue to hold virtual events like these throughout the year? Yes, yes, we will. Uh, we've made a special push during the summer, especially with the pandemic going on, to make sure we're, you know, remaining engaged with everyone uh, as much as possible. But we are planning to continue having at least monthly webinars as much as possible, you know, throughout the rest of the year. So we are scheduling one for next month and then another one for August and look forward to announcing those dates and topics. I think we've already mentioned them, but have those out soon. So yes, you'll get to see more of us uh, and more from, from folks sharing information about what's going on in their communities, uh, areas of interest. And if you're interested in giving a webinar, if you have a topic that's something you would like to share with us, please send me an email uh, in Aaron. I'll put the email addresses in the chat and we would love to set up time for you to share what you've learned because we have so many things our communities do well and we want to make sure we're sharing that with each other. I love the exchanges that I'm seeing now in the chat between people. I don't know going to send us a copy of the, all the chat, are you not, Bethany? Yes. Because it's, there's some really great minds and some really great ideas floating by here. <laughs> 
Yes, I shared copies of the slides. Copies of the chat will be coming out as well as the recording, and then it'll all be posted to the CAP website for reference as well. Super. Oh, poor Celeste. She was trying to cut and paste every chat or the ones that. <laughs> yeah, apologies. I should have clarified that I could I could archive that, but that's okay. <laughs> it's like note taking. Notes. I have a. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna post my emails as well. Oh, perfect. Thank you. All right. So I guess we could maybe have time for one more question that we have to wrap up. So any last questions? Okay, then as a reminder, I know John and Dan are happy to hear from you and we have included the link to that toolkit with the many, many different pages of resources. So if you have any questions or, or want additional resources or anything like that, feel free to shoot them an email. And I've also include the link to the Fast Start Leaders Guide, which has a lot of different leadership information and Mike Murray's scholarship. So I need to say, got a lot of thanks in the chat for Dan and John. Thank you both so much. I know you put a lot of time and effort into putting this presentation together and rehearsing and taking time out of your day to share with everyone else. So thank you so much for being here and thank you all for attending. Look forward to seeing you at the next one. <laughs>